This video is a tutorial in how to do fence post loops and how to do sentinel loops. Uh, it's kind of a continuation of, um, of a video that I just finished doing file objects. And so I showed people how to open a file, uh, how to create a class definition, how to read the objects into the an array of that class. And also, if you haven't already, you should definitely watch my chapter five video from Building Java Programs. Problems, um, I'm going to try to put the link up here in the upper right for you to click. You can access either of those videos. So let me start from the very beginning. We're going to create this file here, file new Java project. And I'm going to call this one, um, I'm going to actually call it the loop and half because both the sentinel and fence post, post loops use the loop and a half, and that's really the common element between them. So I'm going to then create a new class. I'm going to give it, we're going to create it in the loop and half directory. I'll also call this, oops, loop and a half, create a main. So let's start with the basics. Let's just demonstrate. Two, two topics that we're going to be covering today is a fence post loop and a sentinel loop. And both, so the fence post loop is the problem where you want to print n, n numbers, in this case five, and you want to have n minus one separators, commas. And we call it the fence post loop because these these numbers here at the end, these are like the fence posts. And in between them, you have pieces of wire, but there's one fewer pieces of wire than you have numbers there. The sentinel loop is something where you're going to have, ask the user, enter a uh, number. And then I'm not going to draw it out a bunch of a bunch of times, but you're going to enter two, three, four, and then finally negative one to end, and it's going to spit out. Okay, the sum is what is that? Nine. So it has to loop over and over and over again until you get this sentinel value. But I want you to notice right away that this sentinel value it's kind of it's kind of like this same situation where you you have these numbers that you're inputting, and normally you're going to you. I'm not showing anything here, but actually in between each of these numbers is a sum. Like I can draw it out, right? You're going to you're going to add that number there and you're going to add that number there and you're going to add that number there, but you're not going to add here. Okay? So I'm putting out no adding cuz you don't want to add that negative 1 into the sum. So when I draw it like that, it, you can see that it's actually the same problem as this. There are n things here. And there are n minus one separators. There's only three separators, even though there were four things. And that's why these two problems are actually the exact same problem, just in different sheepskin. Let's try the very simplest problem, this one, two, three, four, five. So I'm just gonna let's start out with the simplest. For int index equals one till index less than equal to five, index plus plus and then sys out control space with that i let's do let's do the print and let's just run that i'm going to hit control f11 and oh sorry index control f11 and there we got the numbers okay now let's modify it so the form of a fence post uh fence post loop loop and a half we call it the loop and a half because there's two parts there's a half loop and then there's a full loop. The full loop is actually in reverse order. So instead of doing uh, 1, 2, 3, we're actually going to do 2, 3, 4. So the commas come first. So commas, then number. So let's do the full loop first. So we've, we're printing numbers here, and we're actually going to print comma plus the number, and we're going to bump up the index to two instead of one. The half loop out here, it's like planting that first post, and all we have to do is sys out that first value. So now when I run this, I get one, two, three, four, five. Okay, we'll fix, we don't want to actually make that a print line, we want that to be a print. 
So what normally a lot of people do is they think, oh, what I need to do is I need to print the index and then just I'll put in a separate line so you can play with it easier. And then I'll put a comma here. And the problem, um, let me start with one. I'll comment this out. So this is the way that a lot of people approach the problem. And again, not the lin. But you see, you've got this extra comma out here. So some people will solve that problem by putting an if statement in here. But the UW doesn't recommend that because there's a couple of reasons. One is they don't like um, conditional evaluation when you don't have to. The other is that there are many ways to do these exceptions. This one way I'm teaching you will work for everything. Almost everything can be fit, fit under this loop and a half solution. This is actually not the solution that most professional programmers would use because our code gets too complex. But that's really for a separate time. Okay. Right now, the goal is for students to be able to always write code and have it work. And for that, this is the best solution. So we're going to plant that first post there. And then we're going to do reverse the order to be comma index. So I'll just run that one more time. Oh, and I almost forgot. Kind of update that. So the three things we had to do from drawing that loop. Number one, we have to plant the first post. Number two, we had to update our index so we don't plant the first post twice. And then third, I had to reverse the order. Instead of printing number, comma, I had to print comma, number. Same problem here at Sentinel Loop, just different clothing. So what we're going to need to do is we're going to need to get the first. Instead of printing the first, we're going to get the first number. I'll, I'll just show this half loop. Full loop, reverse. So whereas normally, well, I'll show you the, the full loop in forward order. Okay, let's let's try this. Um, let's first of all, let's create a scanner. And let's import. So we've got our scanner, and then let's just try this in forward order. Sys out. Enter a number. Let's make it a print instead of a print lin. And let's get a um, current and sum. Current equals sc dot next int. So that'll get us one number. Now let's well, already I'm having a problem because you can't really write the, the loop without testing it. Um, you're going to have to have a while. Yeah, I mean, I can't even do it. <laughs> you really do need to do it in reverse order. So uh, let me go ahead and, and, and do that. So we have to get a first value here. We're going to get the first value. And then while current doesn't equal negative one, we're going to do the full loop in reverse. So now we're going to do this, but this will be the second thing that we do. The first thing we do is we're going to have to add that current to the sum. So the reverse order is uh, add, then get next number. So we've got a half loop and we've got a full loop. Now, um, and then after we're done here, we still need to print the, I won't even bother prefacing it. Let's just print out the sum. Okay. Okay. Uh, line five. Oh, semicolon. Okay, so obviously I'm going to have to have a print line here before I get started, but we'll, we'll fix, that, fix that later. So I'm going to enter 2, 3, 4, and then negative 1. We get 9. And um, I'll show you also, you don't really need to do it on separate lines, right? You can actually do 
two, three, four. Now it's going to look a little bit funny because it'll keep on at printing out enter a number, enter a number, enter a number. But because it's on the system input and I already gave it to it, it's scanning. It's it's got these other tokens in it, in the in the queue still, and so it's going to get those one after the other, just like it was in a file. Okay, so this is a basic Sentinel loop. And so again, both of these are Sentinel loops. Oh, sorry, they're they're both of them use the loop and a half. We've got the fence post. You know, let me make this a little bit. And it's a little hard to see both. You got the the fence post up up above. So we got a half loop and a full loop. Here, the Sentinel loop. You've got the half loop, and then you've got the full loop. Um, let's uh, think about a little bit harder example now. So instead of just printing out the numbers, let's say, we'll try a new one. Let's do a fence post loop. This one will be random number. So just numbers one to 10 until I finally get to nine. Um, Okay, so that we're going to have a half loop and then a full loop. The half loop will be print our first first random number. The full loop is going to be reverse order. Um, uh, this time we don't actually have to sum anything. Um, let's go ahead and, and have a sum. What I don't even know what the sum that is. Uh, let's do the add, and then we will uh, get next random number. Okay, so let's work on getting that first random number, and uh, we need a new variable here. So let's have int. Um, actually, I think I have I have these variables down here current and sum. I'll just move these up here. So I'll have these to do. Okay, so current is the one we're going to get equals math dot random. Now that's a double. Oh yeah, actually it's a double. We'll have, we'll have to force it. It's a double between zero and one. Then we're going to multiply it by um, 10. That'll be a a, a, a number between 0 and 9, it's a double, I'm going to have to force it to be an int. So that's the value, and then we're going to do the full loop while current doesn't equal 9. Then I'm going to do the same thing here, but I'm also going to sum it up. So sum plus equals current. And, you know, because this is really going to be in the way. Let me just comment that out. If you do control slash, it'll comment out a block. Okay, so that's going to be current. And um, we actually oh, we almost forgot we had to print, right? So, and instead of the print lin, let's do print. And here, where are we going to do the print? Well, normally you would you would print the number and then do the stuff. So we're going to do the stuff, the sum, and then we're going to print the number. But we have to print that number before we actually get to here. So we're going to print it. Let me copy that line. We're going to do it here. Because if I printed it after here, then we've lost that number, right? So this is really the 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 part of the adding, that the first half, and then this is the second half of the loop. So we're going to get the next number, and then at the end, we're going to sys out the um, sum. And I think we're probably going to need a blank line. And we also are going to need... Okay, so the first value is going to print. Here, we're going to have to print... 
comma number. Okay, let's see what we got. Run. All right, now we got, we got a lot of zeros. I don't think my conversion worked effectively. In fact, it's still running. So uh, let's think about what we've done here. We've got, oh, you know what? It's order of precedence. So this, this right here, because it's it's actually going to force this to be zero and then multiply by 10. So we got to put that around there. There we go. All right. So one, two, three, four, five. Let's get a, well, let me just comment out this, this first section here we can see what's actually happening. Okay, we got a bunch of zeros, blah, 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 blah. Finally, we got to nine. And you'll just have to trust me. Let's try running it a couple times. Hopefully, we'll get lucky and get it quicker than that. Okay, so we got one plus four is five, plus six is 11, plus seven, 18, 20, 21. There it is. So then last nine did not get added in. So is this a fence post or is it a sentinel loop? Well, it doesn't really matter. What matters is that we used a loop and a half to solve it. It started out as a fence post because you you look at here and you say, well, okay, it's it's clearly a fence post. But then you also realize, oh, you know what? It's 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 it, we have to keep on doing it until we hit a sentinel value. So it's a sentinel loop. But it doesn't matter because it's all the same thing. It's a loop and a half problem. Now, for those of you who are advanced or who learned it the other way, where you would normally print out the number and then you would say, um, if we ha we're not at the end, print the comma. I want you to think about how you would do this problem. The answer is you can't do it that way because you don't know what the next value is. You're not just looking at a for loop. You actually have to go out and evaluate that next number. So, so you can't do it that way. And so that it makes your code really complex and it's not even clear where you should be evaluating that next number first. So you start to get into this recursive situation. So the reason why I teach it this way, again, is because this way is always guaranteed to work. Do the loop and a half as odd as it might seem and it'll always work. Even file access, um, file access looks a little bit different than this here because you, instead of uh, checking a, a value, you actually have to check um, dot has next, but you can actually do file access the exact same way. You just have to do that has next and store it into a Boolean and then check the Boolean if it's true or false inside here. Um, so my point is that it, it, it can be done um, done for everything. Now, this may have actually been, I may have jumped a little bit too far ahead. So let me go a step back and try something a little bit simpler than this combination. I'm going to comment this out. And I want to show you a method call because I oftentimes ask my students to do method calls. So might as well show that. Let's make a method. Let's call it... Um, uh, odds and it'll take a number say five and let's create the method down here uh, public static void odds of int n and what this is going to do good java doc uh, we're going to print the odd numbers starting at 2 times n for n numbers. So odds of 5 should print, so 2 times uh, 5, okay, that's a little bit funny printing that, but 2 times n is 10, so it's going to be. Um, it's going to be 11. We'll go back to, <laughs> I'm going to get the odd number. Um, I think we'll just add one. We'll just do two times n plus one. 11, 13, 15, 17, 19, right? That's what it's going to print out. All right, so let's start with a simple loop. So we're going to do two times n plus one. Well, odd is less than, uh, you know what, actually, instead of doing that, it gets a little bit complicated. Let's have a, a variable that will be our value. So int um, 
num equals 2 times n plus 1. And then I'm going to do a count here. For count equals 1 count less than or equal to uh, n and then count increment. Let's just start out by doing a sysout of and let's make it a print of num and then num plus equals to 2. That'll give us our next odd number. Uh, and we need a semicolon up here. Let's try writing that. So 11, 13, 15, 17, 19, all smushed it together. Okay, so now let's put that fence post in here. So we're going to do the half loop. It'll be the first odd. Full loop, we'll do reverse order, which will be we're going to print, um, we're going to um, comma, and then number. And we're also going to need to, we're going to need increment. But let's think, we'll, we'll think when we get there about where we're going to increment. Okay, so uh, we've got the number here, and we got, the, let's get the comma going here. So let's do a sysout of comma space, and then we got sysout the number. Now what happens if we do the increment of the number? Uh, we can do our first loop, right? We're going to do sysout of num, and now we've got count two. Got to bump that up. and. Now we're going to figure out where we're going to increment. So this will print out the first number, 11. It's going to print comma, and now it needs to print 13. So this actually needs to be done up here before we do the next number. Okay, let's start running that. Oh, let's not do the print len, let's do the prints. If only sysout had an option. There we go, 11, 13, 15, 17, 19. So that's an example of doing it um, with a method. Let's try another one. This time, let's try it with a word. Hmm, what should we do here? I just came up with the idea uh, that let's try doing some ASCII art. So instead of printing 1, 2, 3, 4, these, these vertical bars here, are those numbers. So that's like one, that's like two. And instead of the commas, we've got these stars. We can actually make this nice little tree here. So this is going to take a nested loop, I think, because we're going to have to be doing this. Um, we're basically going to be calling a method that, that prints out the fence post a number of times. All right. So let's write that outer loop right here for rows equals 1, while rows less than, let's try 9, something big, rows plus plus, and then we're going to call a new function. We'll, we'll call it, um, um, gosh, what would you call it? Layer. We'll call layer, and then we'll call it on the rows, because each time we're going to go go down from one and that's the that's the number we want to do. Let's copy this. Let's create a new function down here. Public static void layer int n let's give javadoc and then we'll paste this in here. So print out a Of a, I'll call it a virtual cake, and then we can actually put numbers here, so you can see. Okay. 
Okay, so we don't care about which row we're on. That's already been taken care of. Now we just need to take care of printing a fence post with that. So let's think about uh, pseudocode for this. So we're going to do a half loop. Print first horizontal uh, vertical bar. And then we're going to do a full loop. Reverse order. So we're going to print star, then bar. Sys. Uh, I am going to do the sys out and then fix it because just it's still, even after I have to fix it, it's still faster. Sys out and uh, bar. I'm just going to copy this down here because I know I need that. But before that, I'm going to just paste it again and change it to be a star. And then let's put the loop here. Oops. And this is n. So we're going to go from 1 to n. Or 0 less than n. OK, so 0. And uh, well, i is less than n. I think it should be correct. Control A, Control I will tabify everything correctly. So we've got all prints. So let's take the first example where a layer is one. I think I started with one, didn't I? Yeah. So when the layer is one, we are going to print one, and we want it to be less than one, so it's not going to do anything else. When it's two, it's going to come in with two. It's going to print that one. And then while, actually, this needs to be 1. Because if, because now on the second one, when i is less than, so when 1 is less than 2, it's going to do it. So it's going to print this once, and then next increment, it'll come back, and then it'll be 2, and it won't do it. Um, you know, the one thing that we need to do at the end here is we need to sys out a line to have a line break. So let's try running this and see what we get. All right. So, OK, so the only thing is that I'm off by 1. I actually wanted to, so when n is 1, I don't want it to print, uh, get into the loop at all. I just want it to print that. So when it's 1, it comes in here, and it goes from 1, less than 1. It's not, shouldn't, oh, there it is. It's just, it's just a formatting problem. So let me. Let me just comment that one out. All right, so that is the correct stuff. But you notice that we're, we, we don't have the right formatting, right? Because we need to have an in, a decreasing number of spaces. So let's quickly fix that with a simple for loop. Uh, how many spaces do we want to print for the first one? Well, it depends on the layer, because the more layer, the more spaces that we want. So like here, well, I've gotten two, three, four. I start with four spaces. Here, I've got five. One, two, three, four. It's actually five spaces there. One, two, three, four, five, six. And here, it's... One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So I want actually one more for each layer. So um, let's. I said let's just make it simple and arbitrarily pick that we'll space it out 20 spaces for the first level. For every one after that, when n as n is increasing, we'll just take one space away. So it'll be less than uh, 20 minus n. So we'll start out with i equals. 0, i is less than 20 minus n, i plus plus, and then sys out of a space. 
Now let's try running that. Okay. I can see that it's pretty. Let's show it in its all its glory. There we go. So it doesn't just have to be <laughs> numbers separated by a comma. It could be anything. So, and that's still with numbers. I decided that for my final problem, I'm going to give you a sentinel loop similar to the homework assignment where you need to enter strings. So this one, let's call this um, oh, enter strings. Let's go put a Java doc together and make a scenario. So let's ask the user to enter strings until stop and display the concatenation. So this is going to be a sentinel loop on stop. We need to get the first value. And then we're going to have a while not stop. We're going to do a, uh, let's think here. What do we need to do? we are going to concatenate strings, right? So we're going to concatenate and get next string. So this is the half loop. This is our full loop reversed. And we're also going to need some strings here, right? So let's start with String, current, and results. Getting the first value, we are going to need our scanner. Let me go up and grab that. I just grabbed the code from above that got the scanner set up, and then I just modified the code a little bit to enter a string, and then we use next instead of next int. That's the first part of our loop. And I'm going to go ahead, oops. We'll paste this down here while, and then it's not stop. So the current dot equals, and remember we have to use dot equals, not equals equals whenever we're dealing with strings. Well, that's false. We're going to paste in that code I was just talking about. That will be the end. And then before that, we have to concatenate the string. So results plus equals current. And then when we're done, we need to display the concatenation. And let's also add a space in between. Okay, let's try running that. Enter string. Hello there, friend. And then stop. So there's the result. Lastly, I wanted to point out that I had a bug in my earlier code doing this random problem. I was, I was sticking in my head. I went back and I looked at it. And I was, why was I, why am I always getting this double zero here? Always a double zero at the beginning. So I thought, oh, well, you know what? Actually, I forgot to fix this here. So let's make it so the first one isn't a zero. But there's still a problem because, you know, why is it always doubles at the beginning? That doesn't seem real likely, does it? So uh, the problem here is pretty straightforward. Problem is that I've got... I print it out here, and then I immediately come down and print it out here. So I need to actually bring this print statement down to print it after I get the next value. 
Yeah, let's try to get a smaller one so that you can actually see what's going on. Here we go. So here's just a few numbers so that they're not doubles. And as soon as I hit the 9, the end, this is 9 plus 5 is 14, 15, 19, 25, 30. Okay, so the only problem is that it's not including the last number. So let's just add that, because the last number is always going to be a 9. That's, that's the only way this thing ever ends. So we'll just put that in there. Okay, 2, 6, 8, plus 8 is 16, plus 9 is 25. And I also want to look at, you know, why didn't this work in the first place? So this, this full loop is, is supposed to be reversed, and I didn't specifically say that. And the way it would normally be, actually, is what I wrote here. You're going to put a comma and the next random number, right? So what's the reverse is going to get, get the number, and then, then you're going to add and do the comma. I mean, it doesn't matter when you do the add as long as you do it somewhere in here. But the comma has to be at the end. Um, so that's that's what I uh, I should have figured out. So to summarize, this video has been showing you how to solve the fence post loop and the sentinel loop using the loop and a half. The structure of the loop and a half is the same for both the fence post loop and the sentinel. It consists of a half loop where you do the first thing and then a full loop in reverse order. As we just reviewed, the, the it, sometimes it's difficult to, to figure out what's the forward order and then to make sure that you reverse it. But it, it, all, it is always that, that thing. So in the simple case of the fence post loops, you're printing your number, and then you're going to print your comma and number, or maybe it's the vertical bar and then a star bar. And for sentinel loops, you've got um, getting the first, here, let's go down to the last one we did. You, the half first loop is you're going to get that first value, and then you're going to reverse that by uh, as, as long as you haven't hit your sentinel value, you're going to get your value at the end, and then you're, you're going to act on it first. So that's your tutorial for the loop and a half, which, which will solve both the fence post and the sentinel loop. And I, lastly, I should mention, how do you identify a fence post in a sentinel loop? So you identify the fence post because you have n items. And this is the generic form, sorry. I know some people will find this difficult, but this is the truth. You have n items that are separated by n minus 1 separators. And that could be something you're printing. It could be something you're doing. It could be anything. So that's a general form. And you can usually recognize it because you're printing out and you're, sep you're separating it by something. Okay, But it's not always the case because this, it's actually the exact same case for when you're doing um, any of these uh, string input problems. So uh, when you have a sentinel loop, usually it's an input situation. That's the first thing. Not always, but usually it's, a, it's an input thing. For example, the random numbers. Um, that was not a user input thing, but that's actually a sentinel loop. And you you know that you are looking for a particular value to stop on. That's really the key of the sentinel loop. Um, and then you just have to figure out, well, what's the what's the half loop and what's the, the full loop for whatever, whatever it is you're doing, whether it's getting input or calculating random values or doing some other process. So that's how you identify fence post and sentinel loop. And then once you do, it should be fairly straightforward. I would always suggest you start with, okay, let's write out, this is a sentinel loop or it's a fence post loop. There's going to be a half loop here and a full loop here. And you really want to write out, in addition, what is that full loop in the, what's the forward order and what's the reverse order? Think about that. And if you can do that, then you'll be able to handle any of these types of problems. So if you like this, please like and subscribe. That always helps other users find these videos.